Hello, this is Ed with JLM Security Products. I want to do a demo of our GPS Track Manager tracking platform. This is the screen that you see when you first log in. This is the current location screen. It will always display for you the latest report that that device has sent in. I'm using a demo account right now and luckily that device is actually out moving right now so we can see exactly where it is. So the default display, it looks familiar because it's Google Maps that our software interacts with. The default display is the map display. In the upper right corner you can toggle between your map and your satellite displays, however you want to see it. You can zoom in and out. Um, right now I'm using an Apple Magic Mouse, but you can also do it with the sliders in the upper right here. You can zoom out as far as you want. Zoom in as far as you want. Anytime you want to refresh the current location, just click that current location button in the lower right and it will automatically do that. You can also see a quick snapshot of any plot within the last 24 hours. So you see the tw last 24 hours chart in the bottom right. You click that and then click the driver that you want and it automatically plots out all the waypoints from the last 24 hours and again you can zoom out you can zoom in if you want to see a particular stop you can click on any one of these waypoints and it'll give you the latitude and longitude coordinates the exact date and time that that report was sent the heading of the vehicle at that particular time this happens to be an OBD device and the OBD port on that vehicle does report fuel level so this is reporting fuel level this is the accumulated mileage from the time they started using this, which is great for tax reports and writing off mileage for business vehicles. And it shows the speed at which the vehicle was moving when the report came in. And this is, since it's an OBD device, it's plugged into the OBD port on the vehicle, so it's showing the current voltage of that port. For the portable devices what this will display is the battery life uh, displayed as a percentage so it'll be anywhere from zero to hundred percent which is good because it will constantly display your battery life to you with each report the online manual button takes you to an electronic version of the user's manual for the software that goes through each and everything then you can also at the top download the printer friendly version of it so that'll give you a PDF copy of it if you wanted to save it or print it out so let's go back to current location here yeah the device is moving so uh, this OBD device happens to be reporting every one minute now going around the menu here uh, the most commonly used things are let me show you something about the menu first anytime you want to expand the menu just hover your mouse over the heading and it'll expand whatever that menu happens to be. So I'm going to go under the change settings menu. Uh, the change password is a commonly used one. Uh, you will have to know your current password and uh, you will put your new password in twice to confirm that and that will change your your login password for the system. Uh, changing driver icon, that's where you can go in and get rid of this standard Google marker and replace it with, there, there's some icons of cars and delivery vehicles and things like that so you can do that. Adding the driver to the vehicle you don't really have to worry about that because uh, we'll do that for you uh, when we set up your account. Now if you do want to change the driver name you can do that by going into remove driver and highlighting that driver clicking submit and then going back into add new driver and then put in a first name and a last name and hit submit and then that's what that display for that driver will be displayed as. The change alert settings menu this allows you to toggle on and off your alerts so uh, you would you would put a check box in the alert that you want turned on uncheck the box for the ones you don't want on and then hit submit. With the battery the, this is only good for the portable devices uh, it's not really applicable for the OBD devices because it draws the power from the vehicle. If it's a portable device that's rechargeable you can set a low battery threshold so you can set it at 5%, 10%, this one happens to be set at 15% and make sure your low battery alert is on Then you'll hit submit and then you'll get alerts anytime that battery reaches that percentage. 
and this is where you configure where you want your alerts to go. So you can have them sent to both email and a text message. That's what SMS is. It stands for short message service. And this is where you would go in and specify where you want these alerts to go. So if you wanted to add an email address to that, put your email address in, click submit. Same exact thing for your phone number. The only difference is you have to choose what carrier your phone is using. And then hit submit. And then your alerts will be set up. If you need to ever remove an email or an SMS number from alerts, this is where you do that. So you would highlight it and hit submit and it would remove it. Changing time zone, that's an important one. In, in the welcome email that we send out when we establish your account, uh, you will receive detailed instructions on how to do this because you definitely want your device to be in the correct time zone so that all your date time stamps are correct. So this is where you would change your time zone. Under track history, GPS track manager servers hold all reports for a full year. So you can go back any day in history or any range of dates and see all of the plots for that particular range. I'll give you an example. We'll just say we want to see all the reports between September 21st and September 23rd. And we want to see all of them. You choose the driver and hit submit. This will display all of the plots for that three-day period. And again, you can zoom in, zoom out. If there's any one particular plot that's of interest, you can click on it and get further information about that. Geofencing, this is where you go in and draw a circle radius uh, anytime you want to be alerted if the device goes inside or outside of that. Uh, we, we do have a, another video that shows you how to do this step by step. View delete geofences, that's where you would go in and view and delete the, the geofences that you have created. GPS Track Manager allows up to 10 geofence areas in the system. Report generation, the most commonly used is the travel log report. It gives you the same data as the track history, but more in a text format. So if you click on the travel log report, and you want, like, let's just say we're interested in the 21st to the 23rd again, it will give you the same data, except not graphically, but text. So you can go through and analyze them if you have to. If you want to see the exact point of that, you just click on the map at link and it'll kick you over to Google Maps and, and center up that point on the map for you. Real time. This is a feature that automatically refreshes reports as they come in. So if I click the real time button, what happens when you're in real time mode is every time a report comes in, this vehicle happens to be stopped at this location, but if it was driving down the road, every time a report came in, this screen will automatically refresh for you. And the good thing about that too is that it will maintain the map or satellite view and it will also maintain your zoom level. So if you are tracking somebody coming down the interstate, it will automatic it's going to maintain this zoom level for you and also the map or satellite view so if you prefer one or the other you can set it to which one you want and it'll stay that way for you now if you do have multiple vehicles in one account what will happen is every time it refreshes it's going to refresh to where every vehicle will be displayed at once so even if you have them in different states it's going to bring up the display with all of the vehicles in this account on one display. The toggle menu button toggles the menu on or off from the display. The support button is for submitting a technical support request. So if you're having any problems at all, you can click the support button. You're going to enter in your, your name, email address, phone number, where you can be reached and a description of your problem and click submit. This will send an email to our technical support staff and it will automatically open up a support request. Tech support is manned 24-7. Uh, all tech re support requests are answered in the order received so uh, just have a little patience. Tech support will analyze your logs and get back with you and let you know what the problem is. That was a quick overview of how the JLM security products GPS track manager system works. 
Uh, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or send us an email at support at jlmmerchandise.com. That's support at jlmmerchandise.com.